For at TV, the world is thinking. This is the world's largest radio telescope, a big antenna. It's in Puerto Rico. You might have seen it in the James Bond movie, Golden Eye, or in the movie Contact with Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey. Only in James Bond, it comes up out of the water. It doesn't really do that. Um, it's it's uh, 1,000 feet across in Arecibo, Puerto Rico. It holds 10 billion bowls of cornflakes. And it's a big mirror. The radio waves bounce off that, that bowl and are reflected up to the receiver where we have a, a receiver that's constantly all day long, all year round, looking for radio signals from other civilizations. Um, the, the original kind of signals we look for are very simple kind of signals, just a strong signal at one frequency. We'd scan a lot of different frequencies, and we look for a strong signal coming up at one of the frequencies. Channel number 2,264,181. Here's some channel with a strong signal. That was the simplest kind of signal to look for. And then we wanted to branch out. We wanted to look for more interesting kinds of radio signals. And so we started looking for these drifting radio signals. These are examples of signals that are not constant in frequency. Uh, I can't feel very well. But then they drift in frequency. Uh, and so you can see those with your eye. Uh, you can find these drifting signals with your eye. There's three of them there. But it's actually, we have about 100 million of these things to look at every second. So we need about 100 million eyeballs to do this. What, what we've done instead is written a computer program to look for this stuff. We also look for pulsing signals, a bip, bip, bip. And that's actually hard to see with your eye. But here I've circled the pulses. And you can find these if you look long enough. Look for these regular pulses. And that we've trained the computers to do. So what we did is we need a huge amount of computing power to look for these signals. And that's, that's why we asked the public, the volunteers all around the world, to help us analyze the data from the Arecibo telescope. And so what we did is we put together this screensaver program. It's a free program called the SETI at Home program. You download it from our website. You install it on your computer at the office or at school or at work. Um, at, or at home, and then when you, uh, when you install this, this program, it gets over the internet, it gets a little piece of data, so you'll get this part of the sky, and you'll get this part of the sky, everybody gets a different part of the sky to work on, and you, your computer works on that, looking for interesting signals uh, in the spare time. It pops up like a screensaver when you go out for a cup of coffee, it, it starts grinding away on the data, and then after a few days, It'll send the results of that analysis back to our server in Berkeley. It'll send any strong signals that it found, any interesting candidates. And then you get a new piece of data, a new work unit from a different part of the sky. And you just keep doing that until you found ET. Your name is attached to every piece of data that you send back. So any signals that you find, you might get the Nobel Prize. You have to share it with me. And you have to share it with a lot of people. There are about 5 million people that have signed up for SETI at home. The Nobel Prize is about a million dollars, so you get about 20 cents. You won't get rich, but you might get famous. Uh, there are about 1,000 or 2,000 people signing up every day. They donate about 1,000 years of computing time every day. All the volunteers who have helped us, they build the biggest supercomputer on the planet, the largest computation that's ever been done.